Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit, Spirit of the living God, God, fall fresh on us. I'm sure I have told you the story once before about my shortest hell job ever. I took a job as a gardener's assistant in between my junior and senior years of college. My first day out was on a large estate. I arrived early in the morning and the manager of the estate said, your job for the next week is to pull all the weeds. Easy, I said. Several hours later, the manager of the estate came to check on my work and his face looked red and he began to yell at me. Sounds like a contemporary parable, right? Apparently, I pulled all the plant life from one section of the garden and actually left all the weeds. <laughs> you idiot, the man yelled at me. You pulled all my plants. I was fired on the spot, thus ending my short-lived gardening career. In some sense, my termination was the beginning of learning to discern between weeds and healthy plants. It's a bit embarrassing to tell you this story. And in many ways, it was not the last time I pulled the healthy plants and left the weeds. I'm still not so sure of the difference in the garden between the weeds and the healthy plants. You would think at almost to the age of 60, I would know this by now, but there's a mental block in my brain. Stephanie usually keeps a very close eye on me in our garden <laughs> because I love to use the clippers. It's my favorite tool in the whole garden. I just, I, I'm like, you know, a frustrated barber, right? I just want to cut everything. But Stephanie knows that she has to manage my gardening work. Hmm, men, I wonder if this might be a way for you to get out of your gardening chores although likely your spouses know that you, unlike me, know the difference between weeds and healthy plants. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Knowing what and when to cut is a challenge for all of us, perhaps not the weeds and the plants for you, but in the spiritual life. As I said, you all probably know way better than me what the weeds in your garden look like. So it is easy to cut down the weeds in your gardens. But I find, though, that there is something in me that constantly holds me back from knowing what and when to cut out other things from my life. My resistance typically shows up in little ways. So here's one of the little ways it shows up. You might be surprised to learn the way most authors hold on to and even cling to their words, even words that were just written a few hours ago. Words become like life rafts, but rather than rafts that bring life, these rafts enter turbulent waters and set authors astray from their desired impact. In 2007, when I first began to write my doctoral dissertation, I found it enormously challenging to cut out sentences and even whole paragraphs from my drafts. I would quibble over words and sentences. It's almost if I had a lifetime commitment to the words I had written only an hour, a day, or a week ago. Letting go of what I had written was a constant struggle. The struggle to let a few hour old words says a lot about those things in my life 
that for years and decades I have held on to. The words are metaphors, icons of my resistance. And words are much easier to let go of than many other fig trees that you and I cling to and refuse to prune or to cut down. With the trees in my life that need the most pruning, I find myself saying like the owner of the fig tree in the today's gospel, just give me one more year to see what I can do with my dying tree. The parable told in today's gospel is the quintessential Lenten story. We're all the fig tree. We bear good fruit and some less than perfect fruit. When we ignore our fig trees, some of the less than perfect fruit begins to wither due to the lack of spiritual nutrients. Before we know it, we begin to see some of our fruit dying. If you are like me, the fruit dies at such a slow pace and often in such small quantities that the dying process is virtually invisible to me. And when this happens in our spiritual life, we risk being like those who ignore health symptoms and then many months later go to the doctor to learn that they have stage four cancer or have something that can't be addressed and is out of the question now. Looking at today's gospel, there are several points that we all ought to help us avoid premature spiritual death. We are all like a fig tree, and we all have fig trees in our lives, in our spiritual gardens, if you will. We too often take for granted that our fig trees will flourish without intentional care. Like all trees, we need to prune and also be pruned. I like being the one who prunes, but I'm not always so good at being pruned. What about you? Do you like being pruned as much as you like to prune the other trees in your garden? The most challenging lesson of today's gospel, and also of Lent, is that some trees must die. The whole point of Lent is that we must all die in order to live. The way we encounter death is the ultimate test of our spiritual lives. Spiritual wisdom offered to us through life, passion, and death of Jesus is that in death our life is changed, not ended. Through our participation in the life of Christ, our life never ends, but rather changes from one form of life into an eternal life. You might say that our lives is like the Moringa tree. Do you know about the Moringa tree? The Moringa tree originated in Africa and in Asia and is referred to as the tree that never dies. The Moringa tree survives hard conditions and bad maintenance. Moringa oil is known to rejuvenate, repair, soften, and hydrate both normal and very dry skins. In our baptism, we became God's beloved forever. If you will, we are the tree that never dies. Through baptism, we are able to withstand hard conditions and even withstand throughout most of our lives poor spiritual maintenance. Unlike the Moringa tree, we die and through death change to a more full life in God forever into eternity. Like Moringa oil, we are rejuvenated, repaired, softened, and hydrated by the body and blood of Christ. The gift we receive from Christ is not for ourselves alone. We receive in order that we may be sent to rejuvenate, repair, soften, and hydrate others. Some of us will be gardeners to pour some nutrients on withering trees. Some of us will be watching to see what trees are ready for total care by God as we let go of those trees beyond our care. When these trees are beyond our care, 
Do we hold on to them like the resistant authors in the way we cling to our young words? Or will we generously let them go back to God in exchange for eternal life? These reflections return me to the words of Ash Wednesday. Remember, thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. Let us enjoy our trees, admire the trees we are, and the ones that offer us shade in our life. When it is time and we learn to recognize the weeds from the healthy plants, then we will know the time has come. When it is time, we will not cling to the life we know, but welcome eternal life in God. Those who do not fear eternal life will be those who know of the power of God's care over the course of their lives. The way we care for our trees helps ours and other gardens flourish. God bless you. Today we continue our practice of 